All right. This video might piss some people off, but it's all right. So I've been playing a lot of Overwatch recently. I took a break because I just didn't see a point in playing anymore. No free skins. Battle Pass was kind of trash, so I just didn't get it. But recently I've come back. I've been having I've been having a good amount of fun with competitive, but there are some things I miss about the first game. First of all, the end of games. Honestly, I don't know why they took it out, but like the voting system or the card system at the end of the games, that was like that would be really useful for the battle pass, like getting some extra XP if like your team thought you performed well. Be really good right about now. That on top of the fact that it just like it made people stay to the end of the game, you know? Like, there's zero point watching play the game unless you were the one with the play at this point. Usually it's like 80% of the players are gone by then. It's just you and like one or two other people. It's kind of unfortunate too. And it's just, I don't know, they, it just feels so empty. Hopefully they add that back. Don't know why they took it out, honestly, but eh, you're just hoping. Second thing I want to talk about is the hero changes. No. I, I feel like I'm playing a lot more in season two than I did for season one, at least competitive wise. And yeah, honest, some of these heroes just, some of these heroes are good. Like Orisa, I think was a good change. I honestly thought Orisa was like a super boring character beforehand. Like you could have fun with her, but I don't know. It just wasn't my thing. The new Orisa seems like a lot of fun. The whole spear, the stun, the, um, the twirl thing that she has, that move's actually really good. Just, I don't know, she's a lot more active now, but I don't know. Some of these other characters, Brigitte, I don't think I've played her since. She's just not fun anymore, I don't know what it is. She seems like a throw pick, she's on like her 34th nerf. I know they buffed her shield recently, but it's like, I literally don't see the point in picking her. She has like, the knockback stuff is cool, I guess. Like, she seems really, really situational, and the, the the meta we're in now it does not have that situation. May, as much as people hated it, I kind of miss when May used to freeze people. It's like it was annoying, sure, but like and now it just seems like either you're dead or you're not. And like before, you could get a you, like your teammates could save you if you were frozen before. Now I don't know. It just doesn't seem as fun. Like it kind of it seems like it took out something that was that made the character unique, you know. I mean, you could make the argument that something similar happened with Hanzo and like the Scatter Arrow, but no, Scatter Arrow was actually broken. <laughs> like Hanzo, he sells the dragon. Scatter Arrow was stupid, bro. Sometimes I miss the way that it looks, but <laughs> getting one shot about getting hit in the foot was not fun. Sombra, bro, I, I used to have so much respect for Sombra mains. Like she just seemed like such, like a technical character to play. And like a good Sombra, you could tell they were just really good, man. They put a lot of time into that character. Now, Sombra's brain dead, bro. It doesn't even like... She had infinite stealth before, but that combined with the fact that you can hack people while cloaked is just ridiculous, man. I can definitely see why she was nerfed. And now she's just kind of non-existent, which then led to the Roadhog meta, which is, yeah. Who else is there? Right, Sojourn. Nah, bro, come on now. I hate Sojourn. This is ridiculous. It's like basically soldier, but also you can be a sniper sometimes. It is so not fun. A character with that kind of movement that can also one-shot you? Jeez, man. I don't even know why you would pick soldier with Sojourn in the game. He can heal, I guess. She can't, but come on now. The last thing that's... I miss, it, basically everybody misses this, the freaking loot box system. People th people think that, oh, it's crazy that people miss loot boxes now, but I don't think that that was ever an issue in the first game. Like, loot boxes in general, sure, but the way Overwatch handled it in Overwatch 1 was actually really good. Like, you could get a majority of the skins in the game without paying anything. The only skins you really had to pay for was the Demon Hunter Sombra skin, from BlizzCon and I think maybe one other one. Like I had a ton of skins from that. I actually made a skin video, but I don't know. I just didn't, I stopped caring about the game for a while. So then I just never posted it. The loot box, people brought up another thing, how, oh, it's uh, promoting gambling to kids. But like, bro, honestly, honestly, that's a parenting issue. Like, is that, 
I, nah, I can't say that. I was gonna say, is that that much different from like when I was a kid buying like packs of Yu-Gi-Oh cards or something? But no, nah, I could I could definitely see how it's different here. <sighs> Either way, it's just it seems like a way better system. Whereas like you could get a ton of the loot boxes free. You never had to put money into the game. I I never did. I had probably most of the skins before Overwatch 2 came out. Maybe like. 70 80 percent of the skins and i'm not just talking about like all all the blues whatever like nobody cares about that i had a lot of good skins I'm like uh, i had overwatch league skins i had some of the twitch drop skins the free ones not the paid ones obviously I had some of uh i had a lot of the event skins just from like the, just the ones that you would get like around the year the um what is his name the sigma maestro skin the dr mercy skin didn't have pink mercy but yeah again that's a paid skin it just seems like nowadays that like the games are so dry because of the lack of skin variety like you can tell who pays who uh puts money into the game who doesn't basically if you see them playing kiriko and they're just in default yeah there's no variety in like the emotes that people use anymore the skins the voice lines it's just I don't know, people show up just to play the game now without anything else. And the excitement for new events is just all but gone. Even the ones that were bad, like towards the end of the game, like some of the skins I just did not care for, but I mean, if there was one or two that I liked, I really, I figured I could get it. But just playing the game some, nowadays it's like, who cares, really? Because it's ridiculous, like the amount that you would pay for like a couple bundles, you could just get like... Basically, you could get a game for every skin bundle you get, especially with the way Steam sales are. And if you go to indie games, it's even more than that. Yeah, I, that's that's a huge part of the reason why I stopped playing originally for a while. It just feels like you played the first game. You have like an ever shrinking list of skins that eventually all of the rich kids and content creators would have all of them. And also the skins that came out in Overwatch too. The feeling of progression is a huge thing too. It's like, I don't know, it just feels like nothing's happening. I was waiting for the hero missions to come in January. I actually gotta check the date on that because that was like the main thing for me for Overwatch 2 that I cared about. But I don't know when that's coming out now. It's, I feel like it's just gonna be something to do more so than just uh, going on comp games and like with the way that the What's the way the matchmaking is, the freaking whole forced 50% win rate thing is honestly super annoying. Like, I thought they were going to get rid of the whole uh, hidden metric that, like, determines who you get matched up with that isn't SR, but guess not. Being on fire is an honorable mention because it's nothing huge, but, like, I do miss it. Like, the voice lines are still in the game. I'm not really sure why they took it out. Maybe it's because, like, they had to rely on certain metrics, like, um if you were capping a point, but now like there's no objective time or anything like that. Now nah, maybe I'm reaching, maybe I'm reaching, but yeah. It's not all bad though. Like there are some good things about Overwatch too. Like despite how uh, <laughs> vulnerable it feels to play support nowadays, it is like an excuse to play like somebody more fun every now and again. Like the Lucios, the Moiras, I feel like less people are mad at picking those characters especially because the scoreboard you can see how much they're healing so it's not like i'm not getting freaking flamed for uh 27 000 healing anymore but all right i feel like that was a huge issue before and it's like you can't even say you can't even say you the amount of healing you had because it wasn't like it wasn't like anyone else could see it it was basically speculation on whether or not they were doing anything and if it didn't feel like they were doing anything then they weren't doing anything another thing is the queue times are way faster like competitive overwatch towards the end was like it was ridiculous you could have an entire you could be playing a completely other game in the amount of time it took for that to queue up like this isn't overwatch related but i remember it was a, uh, he was some streamer he was playing freaking dragon ball fighters matches in between league of legends queue times and i was like all right this is this is ridiculous glad we're not anywhere close to that now like honestly it seems like within like a minute or two minutes for support at least even for like tank and DPS, they seem way less than they were before. Like DPS had like a 10 minute wait in Overwatch 1, the longest time. Yeah, I guess it kind of ties into that, but there's way more people playing the game and it's like, uh, it feels like the game actually has like weight in the mainstream now, especially when 
season one first came out, you would see tons of YouTubers and streamers you just never expected to play were playing the game. A lot of them were enjoying it too. Hopefully there's gonna be some updates that like bring everybody back to it, but I don't know. With the way the first with the way the last couple of years were for Overwatch one, uh take that with a grain of salt, you know? What else? Yeah, I talked about Orisa before as a good hero change. I think Bastion is another one because I can I really hated this character in Overwatch one. It's like he just felt so uh, scrubby, I guess. Like everything that he had and also self healing, it wasn't even like it was really difficult, at least not in competitive, like in mystery hero, sometimes you, <laughs> you were screwed, but that's an arcade game mode. It's, I don't know. It feels like you actually have to be playing the game to play. It feels like you actually have to try to play the character nowadays. Less barriers, especially are really good because I just shooting a barrier for 10 minutes got really old really quickly. Double shield is that was, yeah, I'm, I don't need to say anything else about that. If you know, you know. Uh, I think Kiriko and Junker Queen are really fun additions to the game as well. Oh, what was his name? Vamatra as well. He seems really fun. His ult seems ridiculous, especially playing support against him, but he seems like a fun character. Sojourn, yeah, we, we already talked about her. We don't need to talk about her anymore. See, sometimes I miss having two tanks, and especially because it like it was another target for the enemy team to shoot at. Even though you could make the on the opposite side of that, it was another target for your own team to shoot at. It was like there were some there were a lot of strategies that like you could not you really just can't do anymore. Shatter into Diva Bomb or Zarya Ult into Diva Bomb is just yeah you can't really do it anymore. There are some things like that, but it's clearly like it's a different game though. That being said, I've kind of gotten used to like less characters and there are some benefits to that. Like healing's a lot easier. Every kill matters a lot more because like a 5v4 is a lot harder to win than, um, I mean a 4v5 is a lot harder to win than a 6v5 just because the amount that like each person does is more. And for better or worse, individual play is a lot more like impactful. But that also means that like one person can really drag down a team. 2CP is gone and yeah, I like that quite a lot. I do kind of miss the way certain maps looked. Like Paris, I thought it looked really cool, but I did not like playing on it. Part of me misses Volskaya, but yeah. Hanamura looked cool again, but it was another one that just huh, actually playing on the map after a while got really old. Let me just preface this by saying I'm not any professional. Honestly, I'm probably just some scrub, but yeah. Appreciate anyone who got this far into the video. If you like this video, leave a like, consider subscribing, and until next time, peace. This isn't the type of video I usually do, but I'm gonna be trying a few different types of videos. Probably these more like discussion type videos just on random topics. Might even include like just some anime or just whatever I'm watching at the time. I'll probably take a break from just uh, normal gameplay, or at least I'll post less of it and more of these type of videos. Appreciate everybody that watched this. Again, till next time. Peace.